<laughs> we are doing the interior. So we got a bunch of sanding to do. Later on, I think we're gonna be painting. Yeah, so now it's all put together. We have to sand, we have to make some big choices about the color of the paint that's going up. Cabinets are going in. And the dashboard. For the nav station, we have to arrange the electrics. I you need to, to arrange the electrics. Um, and what else, hang on. Whilst we ponder our jobs list, let me catch you up to speed on where the heck and what the heck we're doing exactly in our oh-so-sweaty hazmat suits. We recently moved our family to Asia, where our 60-foot trimaran is nearing her final stages of completion at the Rapido Boat Building Factory. We're here to help and at the same time, trying not to get in the way. We're hoping to launch this vessel three months from now. We still had a lot to do in very little time. Join us for phase two over the next few weeks, fitting out the boat followed by phase three, making her look good. No, that's it. Let's go and do it. guys must just be burning so many calories. It's no wonder they were so excited during our speech when we mentioned how we'd love to host a lunch and get them something that they really love. Uh, they all started like giggling and chatting when we said that because they must be hungry. It is hard work. I admire these ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of women in here, it's awesome. This is the helm station and I'm to select where each of the pieces of equipment that we've got are going to go so that I can access it quickly. The helm will be here. This is actually going to be facing up like that. That's where I'll control everything and then forwards of that there'll be all of the winches and lines. For example the autopilot I can go 10, 20 degrees downwind, ease the sheets and, and we're all good again and I can come back. So this, this helm placement is actually really important for just to get right, you just want to get this right. Chart plotter is going to go front and center there. I like to keep my BNG gear together, so that'll go there. And then the autopilot on the left here. Elena, you want to get involved in this because you're often at the helm. Where do you want the bow thruster? I feel like bow thruster is like a right hand side thing. You need your strong hand. <laughs> This looks a bit bare. Are we missing something? The throttle is missing, but that's meant to be here. I, I think next to the bow thruster. Yes. There's a the square. Meow. In lieu of a template, we're going to use the correct gasket. So that's going to go there, Elena. Nice. Happy? So Axo Noble are actually doing the paint for the hull of our boat but these are local paints and these are what's going to be used for the interior. Uh, it still takes a week to get a sample. I'm glad we're here to make decisions like this because the hay blue that we wanted, this turned out to be so dark, it's almost black. We are going for like a, a dark theme inside, but this is a little too dark and that was supposed to be for the cupboards in the galley. This was going to be for the beams. This is like supposed to be a charcoal color. We might need to go a little bit lighter than this as well. I love this cream. This is for the bathroom, or one of the bathrooms. Just by looking at these samples, I'm gonna get this one next. This is Azure Bleu, because we need those cupboards to be the perfect blue. I gotta look at it every day. We have some fun novelty wallpapers. These are supposed to look like wooden walls, but we can't have wood because it's too heavy and it'll all creak. This is actually high definition photographs of planks of wood, and it looks so real especially with the matte finish. So this is for a few walls. Yeah, we have some other novelty wallpaper that hasn't arrived yet, I think from Australia. And we might need to scale this a bit bigger. Like this, these are really small planks of wood, very unrealistic. So we're gonna double them in size. Yeah. And I'm not even gonna try and say that. <laughs> Ber Berkish growl. <laughs> RA on just the numbers all you need, yeah, not the wild so names. No. Berkish growl. <laughs> Why couldn't you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Mark. Everyone's leaving for the day. I'm not sure what they're lining up for. Just maybe to sign off. We're just trying to find the power point to turn the lights back on in our trimaran. Because they switched everything off and we're going to do some more sanding. Oh yeah!
I just ripped my pants. God damn it. <laughs> Everything is so dusty. My lips. It's so nice seeing um, the progress that we've made. You know, little white patches are popping up and still so much has to be done. We're getting there, little inch by inch. I'm kind of running out of steam. I want to go home, hang out with the kids. We need to hire a motorbike because it's really hard to get rides from the factory back to town. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more walk. I got the black lung, pup. Derek, you've been sanding for three days. I think I'm getting the black lung, pup. <laughs> That took two seconds. We got lucky tonight. <laughs> Gonna make it home in time for dinner. Now the problem will be him actually finding this place. Anybody here? Hello. Hello. Good luck finding a ride, babe. Yeah. I'll see you at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night. <laughs> Both the kids are already asleep. I was really hoping to say goodnight to them or just see them. They had a big day at the playground and then came back here with Melly and yeah. Well, I guess I'll see them in the morning. It's been pretty full on since we got here. If you watched our last episode, you'll remember seeing our giant checklist we drew up. If not, I'll link that episode in the comments below for you to watch later. Anyway, stick around for today because we're heading back into the factory to get started on our next mission. And we'll be doing a dash into the city to pick out some super important items. Riley has been referring to athletic greens as mathletic greens recently. Guaranteed 50 IQ points. I wanted to share with you today's sponsor. We've been drinking athletic greens since last year. And if you're someone like us who maybe in the past has struggled to maintain good health, or you're someone who's already super fit and healthy and you're just looking for that cherry on top, I have the cherry on top. It's athletic greens. The reason why this has stuck with us from the very beginning was initially the taste. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I get to drink this every single day and I'm covered. Sweet, I can do that. And second to that is how easy it is to make. Health experts say that all good health starts in the gut. And what does that mean? It means we have to take care of our gut microbiome by feeding it pre and probiotics, which is what AG1 has in it, as well as a whole stack of good things. It has antioxidants and adaptogens, and it supports your immunity. If you look at the ingredients list, it is like, it's incredible. Most noticeably to us, after even a week of drinking it, was the boost in energy levels. If I drink this in the morning, I'm really on fire. Athletic Greens are being awesome again and they're going to give you 10 travel packs for free as well as an immune supporting free one year supply of their vitamin d3 and k2 and it all comes in such a lovely pack you get this beautiful tin with it and a shaker absolute game changer you can just head to athleticgreens.com forward slash slv or i'll pop the link in the description box as well I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you that. Don't tell him that. <laughs> no, I'm telling him about our morning routine. Oh. I'm, I've also had a cold, so I just told Riley something really gross around my throat. But I'm not going to tell you that. But what I will tell you is, I'm embarrassed to say that we love coming to Starbucks every morning. That's what we do. Riley and I have a coffee together, make a plan for the day. But he loves Starbucks. I really, really love when there are translation errors. The lady definitely wasn't trying to be rude. I said I'll have I'll have a long black with some oat milk and she goes, I'm gonna give you a latte. <laughs> I go, no, you not. <laughs> if anyone's wondering what my coffee order is, it's a double shot latte with oat milk. But I know I should be drinking black, especially if I want to fast, because this spikes my blood sugar, but I can't not have this. It's the best thing ever. We'd had our morning coffee. Kissed the kids, <laughs> thanks for the coffee, no and problem. jumped in a taxi to Rapido HQ. It had taken a full week since we'd landed here, but we'd finally fallen into a nice kind of routine. Just arrived at the factory for another day of work. Mark's just taken us to see the dagger board. They're currently making some serious progress on the dagger board, laying some foam on the inside. But after this, we're going to our boat and we're actually gonna do some paintings. Right now, they're taping up in places so that we can come in and um, yeah, have fun with the rollers. What, what happens next? Well, uh, after the foam's glued in, it, it'll actually go over to the uh, robot bay and get machined to the right shape. 
and then another layer of prepreg will go on top and goes into the autoclave to get cured. This guy right here is the autoclave, or autoclave. It was invented by Charles Chamberlain in 1879. Its name comes from Greek auto, ultimately meaning self, and the Latin clavus, meaning key, thus a self-locking device. The most essential parts of our vessel, our beams, dagger board, and rudder blade, all go into this vacuum. It is then heated to 125 degrees Celsius, which is 257 degrees Fahrenheit, under pressure for a total of nine hours. It's then taken out where the builders demold the part before trimming away any excess, taping, painting, priming, and finally adding a top coat. It really has been fascinating learning about just the cutting edge technology that they're using right here in this factory. So the guys are just vacuum sealing it now, and I was just thinking this is probably a little bit lame, but for me it's really special to have seen the dagger board be built and I will get to see so much of the boat being put together so when I'm using the dagger board in the future I'll remember this. It's pretty nice to have that all kind of mapped out in your head. I feel high. Really high? I feel. Are a bit red. Yeah. It's good though, you want to get a few fumes in here. Yeah. So if you can't tell, it's chaos today. There must be 15 different people on the boat. Uh, I'm going to jump inside get painting with everyone. I want to breathe in some fumes with the boys. I want to want to let them know that I'm here. I'm interested, you know, and just that I care. I just want to get in there and, and do some stuff with them. Air came off the paint gun oh my God. and it was going like <laughs> the man three dudes were chasing after the end of the hose. <laughs> and I'm I'm like I'm like oh and they're like no you stay there you're gonna spill paint everywhere because I was like oh oh my god it was pretty funny <laughs> the fumes are overpowering dizzy as f so this is the this is the guy spray painting behind me you can see how smooth and meticulous and calculated he is. I was such a massive kook, but I've, I've done a fair bit today, so that's good. There's about 30 different things happening on the boat, including the winches behind me here. I've got Mark here, he's very busy, it's a Friday afternoon. You've all seen him, he came and visited us in at Marsh Bahamas, Harbour, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the Bahamas. So can you tell me what's happening on board at the moment? We've got stuff on the outside, we've got deck fittings going on. Deck fittings? We've got out, outside painting as well. Painting. Um, next week we're going to glue the boat together. Gluing the boat together? One. Yeah. Um, There's a guy down in the engine bay. Engine bay, we're looking at the fitting the, the, the equipment, starting yep. to make places for everything. Yep. Um, the front bathroom's nearly ready to paint, final colour. Yep. Back bathroom still roughing in a bit of the furniture. Then we've got the deck gear, cutouts, helm cutout, cutouts and some things going on down the back, yeah. Then we've got Did the we anchor winch, that? we'll fit the anchor winch and then start looking at the anchor rollers. So that's seven jobs we got going on at the moment and 15 people on board? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it comes and goes, if there's a it's tribe. incredible. <laughs> Yeah. We needed some fresh air, Mark included. The three of us showered and headed into downtown Ho Chi Minh. We are going to buy the top part of the stove. So the bottom part is going the to be... The stove top? Yes. Okay. We're purchasing a stove top. What do you reckon? <laughs> is that the one? Found it. It's just along the lines you're thinking of. Yeah, I mean we've never. I really bought... had no expectation. Of yeah, it. we've never bought an induction stove top yeah. before, but our friend here was saying that this is the best brand in Vietnam. Boosh. So we can't go wrong. And we bought Mark along with us too, so that we don't make oh, any mistakes. Oh, just check out this bowsprit area. This is just brilliant all carbon, all custom, so there's no stainless anywhere on the boat, and that's what Rapido do. And this shit here, oh, a New Zealander would say mint. It's absolutely mint. I need a coffee, that's the truth. Except all the coffee here is like Vietnamese coffee. I've got no idea how to work it. I'm gonna get someone to help me. Mm. Yeah. This is 
is like dessert. This would make a good ice cream, I reckon. Yeah. You put this in the freezer? How was your day? Good, I'm just packing all of this stuff up. I asked for booties, which I think are covers, but they, and they brought me shoes. So I was like, okay, even better. It's really difficult to get the correct size shoes because Vietnamese people have very small feet. <laughs> you gotta get like, Mark can't get shoes. <laughs> and there's a bunch of funny stuff like that happening. I was like, hey dude, can you order me a taxi? And he's like, no. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll sleep here. He's like, oh, yeah, you will. <laughs> I don't know, I really love being in this sort of very, very foreign environment. Yeah, it feels like we're traveling again. Definitely. All right, let's hopefully head home. What are you doing? Turn. Come on. Just about to talk to Caroline, who you guys have met before, yeah. but it's been a while. We're just gonna talk yeah. about the soft decor because we're at the fun stage where we get to order all the stuff that I've wanted to order, you know, like the fun parts. We're gonna talk about that. Caroline, do you wanna tell me about like some of the stuff you've done before this fun part and um, where your time has been taken up and some big decisions you've had to had to make? Yeah, so this project um, from front to back has been a many hat wearing kind of project. So yeah, working in a team across countries. In one day, sometimes I'll be communicating with people in like three, four different countries. Like it's just all over the place. The logical and practical side merging with the design um, which is what good design is, is when you can actually make something appealing visually and make it actually work. Okay, so let's start in the saloon. I guess this is where we'll be hanging out a lot of the time. So this is super important. As soon as you walk in this room, you want it to be like, wow. So yeah, the, the interior design concept for the trimaran overall can be described as edgy nautical with lashings of shabby chic. I believe that was one of the way that, ways that Riley <laughs> described it and it's spot on. Things like, yeah, weathered copper, leather, with We've decided to put like a vintage world map on the nav station desk. Um, That's going to be really cool. Excited about that one. It should be noted how much time Caroline has actually spent on finding us the lightest possible object. So the copper <laughs> faucets in the house, the copper sink. There's been a lot of that. Every time Caroline comes to one of us with something, Riley's like, "How much does it weigh?" And then Caroline's yeah. like, "Oh, uh, uh, it, it weighs two kilos." You're like, "Too heavy, too heavy." It's like designing. For a home times a hundred. Yeah. So I'll show you guys the master bedroom. This is a favourite look um, of Riley and Elena's. The the pink velvet and this kind of like I don't know. It's almost like an islandy modern like vintage infusion, mm -hmm. and it's really really cool. So yeah. this, the wooden so, um, wallpaper that you're seeing, that's what I showed you in the factory. That that wall on the right, that's going to be exposed carbon. That's one of our special exposed carbon walls. We wanted all exposed carbon, but in the end, we were convinced that having a totally black boat wouldn't have been good. And I, I'm, I agree. Like no one wants to live in such a dark space all the time. So. Yeah, it's like glimpses of carbon. And it becomes like a stylish feature rather than. Um, we felt that it was almost turning into a cave-like vibe exactly. and that's not really... Yeah, my mood will be a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right, should um, we move to the master so, bathroom? Yeah, this one's a little bit groovy. It definitely gives off like a modern vintage kind of feel. So yeah, again, the wooden wallpaper. We're going to have a copper sink in there and copper faucets again. Yeah, ah, really cool. I can't believe it. I'm like so excited. Yeah. This is going to look so yeah. awesome. It's crazy to see it come together and like... Yeah finally feel like we're getting to the glory jobs. Yes. <laughs> the next bedroom um, is the guest cabin. So this here is a quite a different look. You'll be able to tell it's sort of like a whole nother realm in there. This green, black and white is so cool and so safe. Like it's very gender neutral and... Yeah, it's very wholesome, I feel, this one. We're moving on to the guest bathroom. This one's interesting. It's, um, how would you describe this look, Elena? 
Oh man, you're gonna be way better at this than me. The so plants are gonna be everything in this bathroom, I think. That's really gonna bring a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to go to a plant nursery here and see what plants grow really well here. I haven't yep. had the best luck with plants surviving on the Vagabond in the past. And maybe we can ask our audience uh, if they can recommend any good oh, plants please. for a boat. Yeah, actually that's a great idea. Plants for boats, yeah. please. Pop that in the comments, that'll be super helpful. So yeah, that's um, all of our rooms. I've got some like rough mood boards that we, this is some of the stuff that we were first looking at when we started. Okay, yeah. Um, might be interesting for you guys to, to see. I guess the next step is actually ordering some of these finishing touches. Yeah, okay. so that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Um, I'll, I'll just say thank you so much and yeah, I'll wait to hear from you. And let's go shopping, baby. Yeah, let's do this. All right, my love, we'll speak soon.